Hello friends, this video on structural organization of animals part 35 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's start our discussion with the digestive system of frog. So we have already discussed the digestive system of earthworm and uh, cockroach. So now we will see how the digestive system of frog is different from both of them. Now one thing here to note at the beginning is that they have a shorter intestine when compared to cockroach or earthworm and do you know the reason behind that that's because of their food habit frogs are carnivores that is they eat flesh now you will be surprised to know that it is easier to digest flesh than to digest plants so basically if you are a vegetarian Digestion is difficult, but if you are a non-vegetarian, digestion is easier. Do you know why? That's because when we consume plants, water plants, plants are made up of cellulose. It has a lot of cellulose and it is very difficult to digest cellulose. Whereas in case of animals, they do not have much of cellulose. So it is easier to digest flesh. So animals which are purely carnivorous, that is which, which do not feed on plants at all, which feeds only on flesh, they generally have a short intestine because intestine is the main site of digestion. So now when the food can be easily digested, why do you need a long intestine? You don't really need it. So that is the reason why frogs have a short intestine and that is because of their carnivorous nutrition. So that's what is told here. They have carnivorous nutrition and therefore a short alimentary canal. So now if the intestine is short, the alimentary canal will also be short because intestine forms a part of alimentary canal. So let us look at the different parts which together form the digestive system. Mouth, buccal cavity or the oral cavity, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, intestine and rectum and finally cloaca so these are some of the parts which together form the digestive system now i'm sure that some of the names here like mouth buccal cavity pharynx esophagus stomach intestine rectum all these are known names we have spoken about all these either in cockroach or in earthworm cloaca is a new name here okay so we will talk about each of these parts one by one First, we'll see where each of them are located because that is also important. So let us quickly level them in this figure. Let us see where each of them are there. So here you see the tube-like structure. So this tube-like structure is nothing but the esophagus. And this esophagus gradually gets into the stomach. This is stomach. And then the stomach gets into this intestine. And the intestine finally gets into rectum. This portion is rectum. And finally to the cloacal apparature. So this is your digestive system. Okay. So let us look at each of the parts in detail. Mouth. Food enters into the body through mouth. Okay, that's very obvious. That's what we have been studying since quite some time. So this is the mouth and the food enters through the mouth. Now what happens once the food enters through the mouth, it goes into the oral cavity. So this space which you see inside the mouth, you can feel that space even in human beings. The entire space inside our mouth where we have the teeth and tongue and everything. So that entire cavity is known as oral cavity. So here also you can see inside the mouth you have the oral cavity. So the food will get into the oral cavity which is also known as buccal cavity. Then it will get into the pharynx which is a muscular structure, a short tubular structure which will enable swallowing of food because it secretes some uh, mucus like slimy substances which will make the food soft and make it slip inside which will later get into the esophagus. So this is the internal diagram. So this is the esophagus. So it will get into this tube and then this tube will carry it to the stomach. Now the process of digestion starts right here at the stomach. What happens in stomach? Now <clears throat> from the walls of the stomach 
some juices are secreted like the gastric juices are secreted hydrochloric acid is secreted so all these things are secreted so partial digestion of food takes place so the food gets partially digested and this partially digested food is known as chyme so the partially digested food is termed as chyme this chyme then passes into the intestine so it will pass into the intestine and what happens at the intestine here again this is the main site of digestion and absorption so bile juice and pancreatic juice received here through the bile duct now in the intestine actual digestion takes place but for actual digestion to happen you need some enzymes which can digest fats proteins and carbohydrates because they are all present in the food which a frog eats so what from where will you get those enzymes who will secrete those enzymes so basically what happens here is you have liver here this is liver the brown colored structure and here you have this green colored structure which is nothing but the gall bladder so what happens is that this liver produces bile juice and bile juice liver produces bile juice and bile juice helps to digest fat so it fat, digest fats so this if this bile juice comes into the intestine it will be able to digest all the fats present in the food but how will we get this bile juice into the intestine because it is produced by liver now this bile juice after it is being produced by the liver it is stored in the gall bladder this structure which you see here the green colored structure so the bile juice is stored here similarly pancreas where do we have the pancreas here here you have just near to this uh, gall bladder you have a small organ called pancreas so similarly pancreas also secretes pancreatic juice which help to digest carbohydrates and proteins so this bile juice which is present in the gall bladder and the pancreatic juice which is present in the pancreas they should reach the intestine so how will they reach the intestine through the bile duct so there is a bile duct or a tube like structure which will carry the bile juice from the gall bladder to the intestine and it will also carry the pancreatic juice from the pancreas into the intestine so now complete digestion will happen here because partial digestion already happened at in the stomach so now for complete digestion you need bile juice to digest fats and pancreatic juice to digest proteins and carbohydrates so now you have all the enzymes to digest proteins carbohydrates fats so complete digestion of food will take place here now it is not only digestion which takes place at the intestine but absorption of the digestion digested food also happens here so how the absorption happens it happens through villi villi are nothing but small finger like or thread like structures which are present on the inner wall of intestine so in the inner wall you have some thread like structures like this so they will help to digest they will help to absorb the digested food now villi are present in large numbers many villi are present so that absorption can increase because more the number of villi present more will be the absorption and that is our uh, i mean aim we want more and more digested food to be absorbed and then utilized by the body so once the food is absorbed i mean once the digested food is absorbed it will be transported to different parts of the body with the help of blood and what happens to the undigested food because not the entire food doesn't get digested some portion remain undigested and thus and that undigested food is passed to the rectum so the undigested food will come here so undigested food will be here and then it will be thrown out through the cloaca so cloaca is something like how we have anus which actually helps in excreting the food material to the outside so undigested food is expelled out through cloaca or the cloacal opening thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material 
find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.